Tuesday morning. We're here at Fanuc UK on Anstey Park in Coventry for the automation and digitisation event. First day today, running for three days, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday as well. Gio and myself are going to have a quick walk round to whet your appetite as to what's here. Uh, Gio, you've had a look round so far. Been quite exciting stuff, isn't it? Let's move it's this It's amazing. Way. The innovations that are here today are fantastic. It's the future. It's a real educational event um, with many partners. Um, and I think that this is a fantastic thing, not just only for Fanet, but the whole of the UK. I think that the automation is such a big part of industry at the moment. And it's so talked about. Uh, maybe not practiced as much as it should be and that's really what this event is about to really educate engineers as Gio was saying and manufacturers as to uh, what they can achieve if they embrace automation. Let's have a look at this cell, this is one area, uh, it's still quite early in the morning here but this is one uh, example of uh, robots working together, we did look at this quickly yesterday as well when we were previewing the event but you can see here robots working in conjunction with uh, the grippers here picking components off and at that robot's actually taken apart onto the central uh, uh, robot and then the central robot if you can put the camera in the center of the uh, of the um, robot there you'll see that's actually picked the part off of the middle robot and put it in and that, that robot's now on a track down to the end uh, it's quite incredible to see all these robots working in unison with each other I think that the fact that they're illustrating the simplification of automation as well as the techni technological aspects, Paul, and the applications it really lends itself to. We've got like welding there where they're drawing on the iPad, for example. Yeah. We've got vision systems. Um, th and, and they've so also got a force technology. monitor on here as well. And this is actually uh, simulating a deburring operation in here. So you can imagine, I mean, deburring is such an arduous operation, isn't it? If you're not doing it on the machine, why not be able to take, or do you want to use a machine to do deburring when you could take it off and do that process somewhere else? That's the. I know, think that's it's just illustrated every element of these robots, what they're capable of. Why have a man auto automating um, or manually doing some of these processes when it can be automated, sorry? Yeah. It, it, it's really highlighting some of the and, the, and the, this control here away. is actually the control center this is the nerve center all of these robots here are actually uh, are actually programmed and um, all of this what's happening is done here at this one control system for the whole cell then uh, you've got this uh, look at this here this we know that um, Gio will be on this one later. If it was wine, you probably would be. This is <laughs> going to be in action later today. This is definitely worth worth a visit for this one. Uh, it's picking the cup up, putting it under the beer tap, and actually dispensing Guinness. Would you believe an That's automated bar? We're speaking to Andy actually. He's saying that we could borrow it for the Swarf and Chip set. <laughs> <laughs> and let's just have a quick look at this one as well here. Um, we ran a competition yesterday on the channel trying to find out how many or, or asking people how many pick and places they thought this could do in a minute look at the speed of this the speed of this how fast this is moving but well, I can tell you now the answer to that question was up to 180 pick and places a per minute, minute per, per minute. minute up to 180 depends wow. on the part generally between 120 and 150 but that is the possibility so this is just one area you've also got their partners here uh, SMC You've got um, the MTC, which is just over the road, World Skills, SICK, Fortress, all of these uh, partners and integrators that you'd probably associate with, um, with Fanuc. One of the great things about this event as well is not just coming to see the hardware, but it's actually listening to presentations um, and seminars that are going to be happening uh, where you'll be able to get involved. There'll be question and answer sessions, and you'll see here that the scene is set. The scene is set here from half past 11 to half past 1 every day this week. Uh, and I think outside of those times as well, there is going to be those sessions. And if you look on the FANUC website, you'll be able to see who those speakers are going to be. But this really is a case of trying to explore and push the boundaries um, within automation. And it's not just automation, is it, uh, Geo? It's the digitization factor as well, taking the information back from and the data, robotics, yes. the data from the solutions. Yeah the internet of things, all massive parts. I think in my opinion, I think it's a, it's a combination of everything what they're trying to achieve here in the next few days. It's a big barrier to entry in regards to automation in the UK is education. Maybe they've not really uh, embraced it because they've not been knowledgeable about it or how they can apply it to their own companies. I think here today at FANUC in the next few days, they're really giving real life examples of how this automation can be implemented simply into an organization, how it can make them more profitable, more efficient. Um, and, and, and some more illustrations here, Paul, all the way down this 
this, this, this is one here, palletisation. I know it's something we, we don't tend to get too involved in at MTD CNC, but the palletisation element, end of line processes, all big parts of what's being um, highlighted here. Collaborative robots with the vision system, and you can see here already attracting attention. But something like this, what this is doing, this collaborative robot, is wherever those cubes are in the tray, it's taking a photo when it's above them to see where they are, so that when it's picking them up, it doesn't matter where those parts are, it can actually, uh, it can actually find them. This then is one of my favourites here, Paul. Now, this is a scanning system, automated metrology, if you like. So, in this particular cell here, it's scanning the component, measuring it, and it's sending the data back, as you mentioned previously, to this computer here, which is creating a model and doing a comparison test on the actual size of that component. So real fast inspection, very quick. S scanning is becoming a big, uh, a big part of inspection these days, and the automation of it uh, is only going to make that more uh, integral in processes. Star Slide in Headlave, we saw this at uh, Star's Open House. They bought it here. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, what's happening here is the robot is taking a component from the machine or it's being fed out onto a conveyor into the robot. It's then cleaned and it's then put into the equator where it's compared against, uh, well, check for tolerances. We mentioned digitization. This is a perfect example of that. It's sending data back to the machine tool. And with that data, it's telling the machine tool, well, you know, the, 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 the component is under mid tolerance. So the tool compensation needs to be changed yep. so it can run overnight. What about this here? We've seen this before as well. You may not have though. This is a, uh, a collaborative robot working again with vision, picking up a bar or billet or bar to put into the chuck which is behind there. The idea behind this is it doesn't matter where these are positioned because the vision system again will find it uh, as a result of using that vision, it will find it and then it will be able to pick it up. The idea behind this, it takes that it takes that real need for the operator even further out of the And equation. one thing to mention as well, the different grippers that you have on each cell, you've got many different grippers, uh, jaws, suction, magnetic, yep. yeah. um, there's so many different types of grippers that can be used. Here's a nice welding application here, Paul. Yeah, welding's a big part. I mean, again, this is another area we don't touch on too much, but welding, I'm told by Fanuc that this is a massive part of industry for them. Uh, and automating this is, I mean, you know, for every uh, one job lost to automation, about nine, I think it is, are, are, are gained. So even by looking at these solutions, you're not really, although in, in, the, in the first instance, you're thinking there's a man out of it, you're just upskilling people to do different jobs. But look at, this is the pallet version of the system as well. So you've got one component being welded in here and you can have a secondary one here. So you're continuously keeping, um, keeping it. Is this uh, the future, Paul? I, 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 100%. I mean, a thousand people registered to come here over the coming days. You don't get that sort of audience unless people are really interested in this. This is a seven axis robot. A lot of the times, Fanex robots may be six axis with an extra axis gives you the ability to get into, uh, you know, into very, very, well, you can see the way it's moving. You can see the motion within it. Uh, you can get right to the top of the, the shell of the, the vehicle here and also or the door and also to the bottom. Look at the way the, way the robo comes in and out of the application as well. This, this example here, Paul, for me, kind of showcases automation. It's been involved with the uh, automotive for industry years. for many, many years. And that's, how, that's effectively how they can produce vehicles at such a low cost. Yep. So this needs to be implemented with all the other industries all now. Industry. Look at this. Wow, what a monster of a robot. Wow. This is actually, I think it's got a 2.3 tonne payload. You've got to come here and see this in action, picking up two engine blocks. And we're going to finish up here now uh, just with the i10. It's been a quick tour around. There's also EDM solutions here. We'll have a look at the application on that a bit later on today. But the i10 here is one of their latest introductions uh, of automation onto their robo drill machine. It's small, it's compact, it's got a vision system in it, it's got a tray system as well, so you can load up lots of components. Where you position them again isn't important, and the biggest thing to me about this is the size. And I think that pretty, if you want to see machining in action, you can see it here. If you want to see your, uh, automation solutions throughout industry in action here, and as I said earlier, the seminars are going to be something else too.